you. So I am going to teach you how to make a cross, a four point um, cross. They're referred to as St. Bridget's crosses. Um, they're also linked to the February 1st Spring Festival called Imbolc um, and the goddess Danu who wakes up the spring flowers. Um, in Christianity it's um, St. Bridget's Cross. So anyway, it's a tradition in Ireland to make them at the start of February. My granddad taught me how to make this when I was little and I want to teach my kids when they're a bit bigger but in the meantime if you would like to learn how to make them I will send you out a pack with all the materials that you need it's just these and maybe a little bit of string just to tie them up and hang them up and um, with me while we learn a traditional Irish Irish craft. I'm here in County Wicklow and um, my name is Sarah Manson. I'm on Instagram uh, Sarah Eva Manson Art and then I also have a website that I share with my parents. They're both painters um, that's actually one of my mom's. <laughs> it's huge. These are all sort of my works here. But our website is ballyrogan.com. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So let's get started making our crosses. So, you need to take two. Two pieces. And hold them between your thumb and forefinger. That kind of anchors them like that. Okay? So between your thumb and your forefinger. Then you get your next piece. And in the middle you squeeze them to flatten it and then bend it okay so squeeze and bend so that gives a little bend in your piece and then you pop it on top of the piece to the right and then Pop that in between your thumb and forefinger and squeeze them flat. Okay, so now you have a piece on top of one of your wings and you're squeezing it between your thumb and forefinger to hold it in place. Okay, then you want to turn it and just hold it by squeezing it and turn it. And, oh, and then pop it in between your thumb and forefinger again, okay? You, th you take your next piece and you repeat. So squeeze in the middle, bend over, pop it, pop it on top, in to the middle, alright? And hold it between your thumb and forefinger and then rotate again. Pinch, bend over and rotate. Okay, so I am actually holding it quite firmly between my thumb and forefinger so that I have a nice secure grip. Pinch, bend over, push into the middle, 
flatten, rotate. Okay. Continue. Pinch over. Pinch, rotate. Okay. Pinch over. And rotate. Okay. You can see the cross is starting to make shape. over, pinch again to flatten, pinching all the time to flatten, and rotate. So if they start to get like a bit loose, by holding the very last one um, sort of here and just over where it connects here, that anchors the kind of the whole thing so you can like hold it with one hand now. Um, so what you want to do is you want to kind of push them up and the direction that they, they bend, you want to push from the bend and kind of squeeze into the middle as well. That way it just sort of tightens everything. So if things become a bit loose, like this, you just push up from the bend in the direction that they're bending. And they all come together like that again. All right, so don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so we're now rotating again. And when I rotate, I, I like to go in from the diagonal, to, from the opening, this is the opening, to the diagonal across. So I'll go in between my thumb and forefinger and I'll pinch the last piece and the next piece together between my thumb and forefinger here. That's a good anchor there. So then I can have a free hand to continue the weave. All right. Pinch, bend, over, and flatten. Okay, and rotate. We're nearly there now. Quite like the shape of this. There'll be plenty of these pieces in the kit for you as well, so don't worry. You can keep going if you want to. Okay, and then rotate. Pinch over and flatten. tradition here in Ireland. I'm in Wicklow myself. My grandfather taught me how to do this when I was a, a wee girl when I was very little. And I, uh, I've i got two little girls myself now so I can't wait to pass on the, tra the tradition and I hope that you guys will as well. So, alright, I kind of feel like that's done. So now we're going to go on to the finishing. This is kind of a bit tricky, but it's okay. So what you do is, this is the last piece that you put on. So you want to secure this, okay? By doing that, you get the adjacent piece here and you just open it up. Get 
those pieces into these fingers here just to anchor them. And then ugh, push this one so that it's now open. Okay. And then you pop ooh, you pop these two in there. In there all right and then like before I said to tighten everything up you just push from the end in to the middle okay. and if a piece is too dry and breaks that's okay too don't panic we're just going to repeat the process so we open that up again, take out the piece that snapped, I mean they are dry so it's fine, and we'll just do it again. Okay, so we pinch, bend, and this time we're going to go over, or we're going to go straight into the piece that we've opened, okay? And we push down. And we push this one to tighten it. So that kind of secures that into space now. Okay. That's that. Yeah. The next bit. <laughs> so these pieces are a little bit dry. Um, if you get fresher pieces in your pack, you'll be able to do this a bit better. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a thin piece. This is super dry. So it might snap again, but that's okay. I'm also going to include some twine that you can tie around the arms. Okay, but if you get a fresher piece, you can go ahead and weave in the arms. So in you go. Yeah. And then you wrap it around. No, see this isn't going to work, I don't think. It's too dry. And then you... Sort of, no, okay, so that's too dry, so that's okay. So this time we're just going to tie them off with twine. So I'll go and get that now. Which is here. Nice natural fiber again. Super nice. Okie dokie. I'll include this in the pack as well. Tighten them up nicely, hold them between your thumbs, and then yeah, just wrap them around a couple times, nice and tight. Um, if they're dry when you get them, then there's not going to be any warping. This is going to kind of just stay as is for the year. Um, but if you do get the fresher pieces, they're going to dry out and they're going to shrink a tiny bit. Um, so just you'll need to just tighten them later on. Like it's a natural process for them to dry and shrink. Um, which is fine. Just tighten them up again if they get loose. I uh, made my last piece out of fresh pieces um, and they did dry and shrink a tiny bit but it wasn't really like they didn't fall apart or anything so I just left it and they look nice yeah. so there you go there's that so I'll just tighten it Boop. okay and then turn and as you go just make sure things are nice and tight and try and get like the arms to be sort of the same-ish length, I guess. with a, a fresh piece um, the exact same 
thing. It's just with the dryer pieces, it kind of just they're a bit brittle. It's grand. So I'm gonna just tie this off. See? So yeah, as I said, the story behind this cross or this four pointer. Um, there's there's sort of two different concepts. You've got your first concept, which is the original thousands of years ago, the goddess Dano, um, from the Celtic folklores and stories, was said to be the goddess of spring or in bulk. And it was said that she awoke the flowers and stuff in spring where she stepped so her steps would wake the flowers and her cloak where her cloak glided along the, the grass or the meadows snowdrops and the daffodils would wake up And then the Christian church celebrates St. Bridget um, and associates this cross with the spring festival on the first day of February, St. Bridget's Day. So I like that it is an Irish tradition that has been around for many, many generations and I want to continue the craft, I suppose. Um, and I want to teach other people. So my family, what we would do is we would make these in the run up to spring. And we would hang it over the front door of our house on the inside. And it was said to protect the house and the dwellings and the people in it from fire and it would bring prosperity and good luck and lovely nice things for the year ahead and you would take the old cross from last year and you would offer it up to the goddess Dano and um, by way of fire so into your hearth or your pot belly stove and replace the old with the new. It's nice, it just it reminds me of family and slowing down and thanking giving thanks for the year that has passed even though there may have been some bad omens this year there were also many many good omens many many good so i like to focus on the good hmm. okay so <laughs> we're just going to tidy this up now So between your thumb and your forefinger again, you're just going to anchor it by squeezing, I guess. And oh. <laughs> it's a bit messy, but there you go. And again, so I like to kind of go like maybe a thumbnail, so it's not too close to the um, to the closure. And then you just chop it off, <laughs> and it looks so nice. There you go, there's your four pointer. 
ready for the year ahead and welcoming in spring and then I will just make a little loop to hang it on my door I hope you guys liked this video and this tradition I'm Sarah Eva Manson from Wicklow. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a blessed day and may your year ahead be safe, warm, and full of happiness and sunshine. I hope we have a really good spring. I'm so glad the darkness is over and we're looking ahead now to the summer. It is cold in Wicklow right now. Oh my gosh. Hmm. So there you go. Ready to go. This is a bit prettier. Okay. So you've got your little, your little loop there. Hang it on your door. Blessed be. Thanks for joining me.